right, so what we're looking at today, I'm calling the, uh, the Gladden Project. I'm actually working on this for a buddy of mine. It's a uh, 1982 uh, 115. Uh, picked it up a, a couple years ago. Well, about a year ago. I hadn't really got around to it. The, uh, the owner said that it ran. Uh, I mean, they all run. Uh, it's just a matter of uh, how well and, and what else it needs. Uh, it has the ADI ignition, of course. Uh, as you can see, it's definitely been ran in salt water. Uh, salt water kills these engines, kills all engines, kills everything. <laughs> so first on the list, we're going to have to pull that lower unit, uh, rebuild everything down there, and then uh, flush the water jacket, flush the water jacket completely. Um, and as you can see, the inside is, uh, I guess where I got this from was inside of a factory, and they just left it kind of open. So there was dust, uh, dust built up everywhere. Those so carbs are definitely definitely gonna have to be uh, rebuilt probably soaked for a couple days here's the verification sticker uh, see it's the 115 so in 1982 they actually went to uh, prop shaft ratings and what they did was uh, they actually detuned this model they uh, changed the jets uh, the butterflies uh, the uh, reed cages inside the main crank uh, they got the 810 configuration versus the 1010 configuration um, and then they put in the uh, low dome, the low dome pistons. So this is actually a detuned uh, 140. I mean, it's probably, I had to guess, probably 10 to 15 horsepower less. They had to come within the 10% Ecomia standards. And it looks like the fuel lines were already redone at some point. I hate these damn things, by the way. Don't ever put these in your engine. But this looks like to be about a quarter of an inch, which is way too small for this engine. The, the least amount you want to go. Uh, inside diameter is 5 sixteenths. That is the absolute least. Um, I, I recommend 3 eighths, but uh, 5 sixteenths is acceptable, but that is the absolute lowest. So, all right, well, we're going to go ahead and uh, do a compression test, do a spark test, and see what's going on.
All right, so what I'm doing now, uh, I got spark uh, coming from the top coil bank, uh, new spark, new spark coming from the bottom coil bank, which kind of rolls out the switch boxes. I'm, I'm still getting ready to test them, but uh, the top switch box fires one, three, and five. The bottom fires two, four, and six. And then the uh, basically on the bottom bottom bank, there's, there's odds and even numbers. So, I mean, either both switch boxes are bad or this coil bank is bad or the stator. I'm hoping it's not the stator. That's uh, one of the most expensive things to replace. So, so we're going to go ahead and test this. Uh, the coils need about 150 volts to fire. So we're just going to go through all of them and see, what, uh, see what's going on. All right. top one nothing off that nothing off that all right so that tells me uh, I gotta test the coils now I gotta check the uh, check for resistance so we'll do that next all right so I got the uh, I got the coils completely removed for this test. Uh, we're going to test the uh, basically the primary and then the output. Okay, so uh, I just got a standard meter here. I got it on ohms. All right, so we're going to test the uh, the primary first, and basically you want to put it on the uh, black on the negative, this on the positive, and right here you're looking for about 0.2 to one, and we're about 0.2 to 0.3. Yeah, about 0.2 to 0.4. Yeah, about 0.2 to 0.3. Now we're going to test the output, and we're looking for about 800 to 800 to 1100. Again, on the negative, you want to make sure you get inside there, get a good bead off of it. This one's coming in around 927. That's good. Yeah, 908. Good. Could be better. <laughs> all right, 922. All right, so this coil bank is good. Uh, so, all right, so as of now, we know that this uh, this coil bank down here is good. Got everything installed back. This coil bank is firing, so they're both good. Uh, right now, we're looking at the uh, switch boxes. Is what uh, I'm, I'm thinking the culprit is. But I'm going to go ahead and test the, the trigger. The trigger just to make sure everything's on the up and up. And the way that you you test this, you have to uh, go from the yellow sleeve, and you see that, yellow sleeve to the black sleeve. Okay, and what we're looking for is about, uh, I think it's 800 to about 1400 ohms. So uh, the first step, we're going to go uh, brown, brown to purple, brown yellow to purple black. Brown yellow, you get a little tricky, if purple is more like a gray. Purple black, and on the meter we got the 1220, so that's good. The next one we're going to go white to brown. White to brown. Alright, 1, 2, 4, 3, so that's good. And the final we're going to go purple to white. One two seven seven. So this uh, this trigger is good. So all that's going to leave is uh, we either got two defective switch boxes or a bad stator. And I really hope it's not the stator. I don't even want to test it. That's how much I, I hope it's not the stator. I think a brand new one's uh, probably two to three hundred bucks. Uh, I might be able to find a used one if I'm lucky, but then you run the risk. I mean, is it working correctly? 
So, but um, so right now my uh, my diagnosis is going to be two faulty switch boxes, and uh, we're going to go from there. I'm going to call it a day. Thanks for watching.